Right, well, if we needed a, a strong start to the episode, his reply to the last thing he said was this. Janet, the girl of my dreams is you. Now, I'm hoping he means that I am just a girl of a dream, not the girl that he loves eternally, because four days is quite short to love someone. Eh? Since we've been here, I've been having these dreams. First, they were about Susan. I'd see her falling and I couldn't reach her. She'd be gone. Then I started having dreams about you. <laughs> How often has he slept? I just, he must, if, when he started, he had dreams about Susan. We've been here six days. So he has had at maximum three or four dreams about me. No, not even that, because we're not at the end. Three dreams about me. And he's like, oh, it must be a sign. Ah, oh, what a gay. All right. Then I started having some dreams about you always falling in the dark and I couldn't pull you back and you'd fade away. And I realized I couldn't stand it if anything happened to you. You're cute and you're fun to hang out with, and you know lots of things I don't. I like having you around. That's having a passing interest in someone. That's not loving someone eternally. Oh god, he's gone slightly red under his eyes as well. I, I know it's my fault that you're here, and you're in danger because of Bianca. But I'm, s and I'm sorry. But if you weren't here, I, I can't imagine this without you. I can't imagine anything without you. Three days. Three. Days. <sighs> but you said you had to get back to the lab. That's because I didn't want to give it to you until it was finished. It. He raises his hand, a length on shining silver dangles from it. At the bottom is a flat circle. No, a coin, an unfamiliar coin with a crowned woman's profile on it. It's not much, it's just one of their dimes and some scraps of wire lint that I could use. But I didn't give it, I didn't have anything to give you. And I thought if we do get back, you might like to have something from Atlanta to remember. I wouldn't. I would never remember it again and cry myself to sleep for every night. <laughs> Remaining. <laughs> That's what normal people would do. <laughs> get with the times. That's the sweetest thing anyone's ever done for me. Oh, yesterday when you didn't come to wake me up, it was because you were working on this? Actually, I kind of forgot you asked. Ah, great. Same old Bradley. Anyway, it's not done yet, so... Wait, I should say something too. You are despicable. I will never date you. Oh. Well, that's close enough. I never thought I'd see anything in a guy like you. Oh my god. There's even guitar now. It's mushy. Ugh. But that's mostly because I never thought a guy... Oh god. Alright. Look. Look. At this point, I'm not gonna read it, okay? <laughs> If it gets to the point where it just so violently veers off to one side, where I feel we're on rough, I feel we should get ourselves back on the fairway. This is what I'm doing. But you are... Shush. Uh, yep, okay, she thought everyone's beneath you. Brilliant, wasn't a real day. Fantastic, judging, love judging. Oh, and then pushy, damn pushy people. Oh, isn't Janet really sodding sweet? Oh, yes, right. Well, we got past that quickly. That, uh, that, <laughs> that could have been bad. There's something nagging at the back of my mind. Something I should have said earlier, but was distracted. I have a spider bite and three minutes to live. What is Janet struggling to remember? About Bianca. Locked. Brilliant. <laughs> Locked. That's a bit harsh, game. Why would you do this to me? Damn you. Well, we have to go with the Bianca, so let's go for Bianca. Let's go to the library for a bit. It's an interior room, so we'll be away from that. Okay. We walk to the library, our hands lightly brushing against each other. This thing, thing Linz is doing. At first, I thought it made sense. If Bianca is in a coma or something similar, electrical brain stimulation might help. But then she dug into her first year medical and thought how it was all wrong. But that's our world science. The way Linz is talking, it sounds like he's... What he's trying to do is raise the dead. That never turns out well in movies. Unless it's the young Frankenstein. In which case all we have to do is play a violin and he'll try and catch the notes. It'll be wonderful. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those, but that's just movies. False fields and anti-aging drugs and magic, too, where we come from. Not to mention travelling to another universe in the first place. I've had some bad dreams all the time. We've been here, so have you. And it's pretty clear that Linz's experiment is getting out of his control. Okay, the magic ball says all signs point to doom. Yeah, well, there's nothing we can do about it, is there? 
What a defeatist attitude! Dear Lord, there's nothing I can do about it. Nathaniel said if he could, he'd send us out of here so we'd be safe. I can't leave, the force field won't let me, but you... I told you before, I won't leave you here. It doesn't do any good if we both die. You can't help by staying here. If that thing in the basement explodes, you can't stop it. You can't save me or Bianca. You don't know that. Maybe it's hopeless, but I won't give in. I'll be there till the end, and I'll do what I can, whatever I can. <sighs> Says that rather, uh, meaningfully. But you ought to escape, so at least one of us can. If we all die here, no one will ever know what happened. Not in our world, or in theirs. I want to go home, Bradley, don't you? No? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm fine in this universe. <laughs> they, they, they seem to play less emphasis on school. Not if it meant giving you up. I don't know whether to be flattered by his devotion or furious at his stubbornness. Furious! It's not just us, everybody's worried. They've done everything they could to save Bianca, and now it's the final countdown! I'm not singing that. For, for anyone that's getting hopeful there. Not going to happen. I have to see how it ends. I don't care about Bianca. I've never met her. I don't know anything about her. As far as I'm concerned, she was already dead when, uh, I may have accidentally pressed space. When we got here. But Bradley wouldn't understand that. He's a caring person all the way down. With that sentence, she just admit, well, I'm a heartless bastard. You're not welcome to my YouTube channel, though. He can't walk away from someone in need, even if there's nothing he can do to save them. Foolish, stubborn, crazy. There's nothing I can do but wait for the end. Oh, okay then. Five minutes remain. I seem to us all dying. Oh god. All in a bunch, we pelt down the stairs, clawing at the rails to keep from falling. Linz, the force field is collapsing. Janet, be careful. He catches my elbow as I stumble. We need to get inside. Alwyn pulls the door open, holds it so that everyone else can crowd through the laboratory. Inside, I see Linz furiously hammering at a console. His lights flicker around him. He's clearly not in control. Thanks for that. Come on. No! If we go in there and Flynn's throws that switch, we will die. I can feel it. We have to get out of here. We have to run. I tear my hand away from Bradley's and head back up to the stairs. Maybe he wouldn't listen to me earlier, but if I make a run for it, he'll follow my lead, right? I don't care about the force fields. I don't care if it's impossible. I have to try. I want to live. And I break out into the light. And I die a horrible death? Right. Well, I've seen the white light, which usually means I've died a horrible death. Or not, apparently. What happened? There's a cricket on my face, apparently. <laughs> I'm outside, in the woods. It's dark. I'm lying on rocks and leaves and muds, staring up at the stars. My head hurts, and that's all I know. Hello? Is anyone there? Bradley? Painfully, I push myself up to a sitting position and look around. It's hard to see through the gloom, and as far as I can tell, there's nothing here. No people, no mansion, just trees. Something glitters on the ground beside me. It's a half-finished pendant in the chain that Bradley was making for me. I must have dropped it when I ran away. I pick it up and watch the shining silver coin swing back and forth in time with my thoughts. No people, no Bradley, just me. I am alone. Janet Bashkar left her dorm at Brook College to go on a date with Bradley Dalton. It was their first date. Janet's roommate expected her to be back within a few hours. Five days later, Janet was discovered alone and disoriented in the woods near Bartlett. Despite police efforts, no trace of her companion was ever found. The primary police theory was that it was all part of a complex insurance fraud by the Dalton family, who had lost another child in similarly mysterious circumstances five years ago. Fuck that! Fuck that. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't I say, hey, uh, who was trying to rape me? Please put him in prison. I uh, would like to sue his family. Can you, sorry, he didn't. Can you do anything to prove that? Oh no, because your son's in another fucking dimension. But then again, I'm just a, you know, Benetri game here. Hang on. Johnny's own explanations of what had happened were discounted as temporary madness, with only a bit of junk jewelry as their evidence. In time, even she would begin to doubt. Ending to Survivor. Well, that's the ending, so to speak. I'm going to now play the true ending. Hang on a second. Cough, cough, sad music, please. Janet despairingly goes into the basement where she is confronted by Linz holding a gun. Suddenly she is struck 
Being told she is a wanker, she falls to the ground. Pools of blood all around her. And then Linz gets out a severed penis from the wardrobe because he is a gay man. My name's Bintanarian. This is the true ending of Date Warp. Goodbye.